Hey, everybody. Well, I've got a great guest today. Two-time daytime Emmy winner Steve Burton is here. Uh, one of the stars of Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem, Chapter 2. Everybody loved him as Jason on General Hospital. We love him on that. And uh, <laughs> known from Stone Cold and the Jackal and his podcast and the comedy show and the tattoos. And we're just trying to keep up <laughs> Steve <laughs> and his life. How are you? It's so good to see you. Michael Fairman, what is going on, buddy? How are you doing? How is it? I'm everything? good. Thank you very wow. much. We just got back from uh, some great shows in Connecticut, New Jersey, Long Island. We had a th only a three day run, uh, which was nice because usually it's like seven days in a row. And uh, it was great, man. It's, you know, I'm just busy. I got a lot going on, which is awesome. I just want to pass <laughs> a few things to you. So I, I was thinking about you on Emmy night. So there mm. I am with Kelly Tebow. Yeah. And Laura, right? Yes. And yes. we're all talking. And I just have to tell you that each one of them said to me, well, my, you know, my scenes are with Steve Burton. You know, my scenes on my mm. with Steve Burton. And I wanted to pass it on to you because they spoke so highly of you. And Kelly's like, I couldn't have done it without Steve. Laura, Very sweet. Thank Laura, you. Laura is like, well, my scenes are with Steve. And it must be, I know it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you hear that and does it make you miss it so much to be with them? And I know, you know, kind of the unfortunate circumstances. That kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Are you trying to make me cry, Michael? Yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Like, it's awesome. And, you know, I know Kelly thanked me and she's a sweetheart. And um, look, those girls work hard, man. Like they work hard. Not only are they good actresses, they just work hard, you know, and we worked hard and you could tell in the scenes, like we worked our stuff, you know, Laura and I have already a history. So, and I've talked about that a lot enough. It's like, she's one of the best. It, I, it's not really working with her. Cause once we get into what we're doing, surprises happen all the time. And I started to find that with Kelly Tebow also. Right. But we would put the work in, we would talk about scenes. We would, you know, do everything to maximize our time together. And I thought there was something like, there was something special about it. And I'm, I hate that it ended the way it ended, you know, because I thought there was so much more to explore, but you know, look, it's a, uh, it, it's awesome. And I appreciate them saying that, but it goes both ways too, you know? So they were in my reels. <laughs> so, right, they're in your reels too. Right. You know, so they're in my reels too. So, Hey, thanks. Right. I mean, and, and, you know, obviously, you know, what your decision was on the vaccine and it, I have a different position on it, right? We're a different sure. position on it. Sure. But like, do you now feel like, I know you've said in other interviews, like, you know, you, you had to do the best decision, the decision for you and you still sure. stand by that, even though it turned out this way, you still feel that way. Is I that do. I do. Yes, I do. I, there was really no doubt in my mind, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just something that, that I believed in and, you know, I just couldn't, I, I could not, I could not do it, you know? And yeah, look, and I always say one, you know, if you gotta, you gotta follow your gut in life, right? Anytime I've ever gone against my gut instinct or my conscience, it's usually not a good result, you know? And that's why regret is always a guideline. Your conscience is your guideline. Like, so I, I couldn't, I don't think I could have really lived with myself if I'd won against it, you know, and, and, and I'm always a bit a big believer and you know me that when some doors close, other doors open, you know, and I just go through the doors to close door, something else is going to open. And I really view life like that. You know, I really do. I, I think, I think obstacles are put in our way in life for us to learn and grow. Sometimes it takes a while to, to, to see things that way. Things that way right? You got to go, you got to really have a perception and a, a, a flip of like, Hey, what is this teaching me? You know, it's like, these are the, these are the things I ask myself every day is like, okay, what's going to be the lesson today? Cause there's going to be a lesson to help me grow today. So I believe obstacles are put in your way. So you do have to look internally and you do have to fi fix weaknesses within yourself, you know, and you can't always rely on your strengths. We want to be well-rounded. But it's like, I believe I look at obstacles as a lesson. So I see them in a positive manner now, as opposed to a negative manner, you know, and I do believe that if you have something in your path, 
and it's hard. You got to overcome it. You're going to become a better person on the other side and other doors are going to open. I mean, that's just, it's already happened for me. Like it's happening now, you know, with beyond Salem, it's like, that's, you know, that was so far out of the realm for me to even. That's what I was wondering. Like here you were coming off Jason and what you yeah. in the whole story of the vaccine mandate and being let go mm-hmm. and kind of ended on this thud. And then <clears throat> I was like, how did you feel about going like back into a daytime, even though it's streaming, it's a different arena mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the family? Did you think you would never have a chance to act again in daytime? No, I thought, I, look, things change. I mean, especially things are changing daily with things all the time, right? So um, no, I, di- I didn't really put, I didn't really worry about it too much. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I felt that, um, if things change or change at GH, sure, I could probably go back. Uh, I was on Young and the Restless. There might be a door open there. I never really thought about days too much, you know, but I, w- I do visualization every day and I would think about all four shows, you know, and go, hey, if there's a job there, awesome. Like, bring it. I'm, I'm open to it. It's daytime. It's my home, you know, so. Uh, but I didn't think it would be this way, <laughs> you know, I had, I had no idea, like no idea that this would work out this way. How is it for you when you're, you know, you're a lightning rod for, you know, chatter online and on social mm-hmm. media, people mm-hmm. take a position left, you know, this bad or good. Or, sure, like, sure. How does yeah. that affect you or does it affect you? No, it doesn't really affect me. I, I just don't, I don't put a lot of stock in. First of all, I don't, I, I'm not on social media a lot. I do post on social um, but about two years ago, I just, I stopped watching the news. So I don't watch a lot of TV to be quite honest. I don't watch the news like times when, when big events happen, like I'll find out a week later cause I don't know what's going on, you know? And, and what I, what, it, what it's helped me do is, is be able to stay in a positive frame better because like you are cesspool of it, right? Yeah, you are what you ingest. I mean, that's what that's what that's just truth. Like if you're ingesting that stuff all the time, it's just not going to be great for you, you know. Um, so, I mean, look, I'm a human being. You're going to get feelings. People have feelings, but I just don't, you know, I just don't pay that much attention to it because I, I'm just living my life, right? You know, I don't want to get caught up in the little things, you know, and it's like I'm just. I'm just focusing one day at a time. I try to be as present as I can now, you know, because so many people live in the past and I have, and then we're fearful about the future of what's coming is going to happen, you know, all these things. And I just try to be, I just try to stay present because you can't really be like here. We're in a flow state. We're talking like, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not thinking about pain. I'm not thinking about not having a job. I'm not thinking about, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you can be in the present, and just focus on that daily, I mean, you're just going to have a better life. But to answer your question, listen, I don't get into politics. I don't do, I don't talk it. I don't, because it doesn't matter to me. Like I just try to live my life the best way I can and be the best person I can. And I just feel that when we, anytime politics is brought up, it's always negative right? It's always a negative thing. Even if it's with your friend, even if it's with a coworker, it's always a negative thing, you know? And I just don't see that you can, you know, we need to come together as people, right? Like, and that's what's so important. And and a lot of the realizations I've had is if you can look at somebody and know that they're either in pain right now, right? In their personal life, or they operate or they're they're either operating from a place of pain or, they ha- or they've been carrying a ton of pain and guilt, right? So this is how I try to see people is go, hey, they've gone through some stuff. They're in pain. No matter what their attitude is, no matter how they're treating me, I know usually it's from a source of pain. So right there, I can have empathy and compassion for people more than I did before because I'm looking at it going, hey, this person's in pain. They're probably going through some stuff right now. Trust me, it's hard to do. Hard to do. It's going to be hard to do. But yeah. that's why I work at this stuff daily so I can keep this outlook. Well, right. And what, what I was trying to say is when you're yeah. in the news, when people write about you and you're in the news, because everything mm-hmm. you do, everybody, you know, they're very highly trafficked articles. People, no sure. matter what you do, no matter what. I'm talking right. 
whether it's personal, career. Sure, I get it. I get it. It's Steve Burton. It comes with the celebrity, right? It comes with yeah, it. Yeah. So I get it. Does it does that ever get like uh, uh I please stop. <laughs> I don't want to be this famous. I don't want or do you not think of it that way? Uh, no, I mean it's not about I don't want stop because uh, because look, the, the reality is I'm a public figure. That's the reality. Right. I, I've you know it's because I've had an amazing career because of it. Like because of fans, because of people writing in, watching, like I've had a career, an amazing career because of it. So it's kind of the slippery slope of like I, you people can be, I'm I'm super grateful for it. And then there are other actors who don't want to be in the spotlight or the public, but yet that's what you're choosing to do. Correct. Right? So, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a, so there's, so there is, there is, slope, there is right? a response and you do have somewhat of responsibility, right. you know, right. and, and you are a public figure and that just goes with the game. I mean, so then you got to go, go take a step deeper and like, okay, how am I going to let this affect me? Right. i you have a choice in how things affect you in life. Right. It's not always what happens. It's how we react. It's how we respond. It's how we deal with it. It's our choice daily. So I'm a public figure. Things are going to be said. Think articles are coming up. Videos are going to be out there. That's just how it goes. Like, so I can choose to let it like ruin my life or I can choose to be like, hey, it's part of my job and it's a responsibility. Okay, moving on. I mean, you, you have a choice, right? Right. And so you leave General Hospital or that happens. And then all of a sudden you become Mr. Tattoo. Ah, well, that's funny. And I was like, oh, I was like, so me and Laura were like, I think there was a time we're like, hey, even she's writing like Stevie B, Tattoo. Like we're just yeah. following, you know, because we yeah, yeah. all know each other so well. And I'm like, what's going on? Because well, I never truth. thought, because it's a cool, I mean, you've got a whole tattoo here, right? Yeah, I've got a whole sleeve going here. It it's, yeah. that's, that's almost that's almost done. But oh well, oh, we're 44 hours in here on this. So um God. yeah did, it was a, did you want to do this all the time or was this i like did i've had many i've had numerous appointments over the years ah to actually i had an appointment i remember when i was on young and the restless i had an appointment so the, how long ago was that five six years five, ago seven, i had another appointment five years prior to that um and i knew that if i got the tattoos i wanted i'd probably be in the makeup chair a long a lot covering longer right. covering it up um so i'm like and then at that point i was like okay what do i really want do i know what i want yet and i didn't really know what i wanted yet because i wasn't really putting any kind of research or you know putting a story to it or whatever so um and now you know i'm i don't have a job i'm free like you know i just can do whatever right now and that's what kind of what i'm doing Did it feel like a freeing thing like a freeing thing for you to like finally do this and not have to worry about like correct I, yeah it, it did it, it must have been a freeing thing that steve wanted to do right? <laughs> yeah because i did see <laughs> once i did it i saw i know people were like midlife crisis midlife you know? crisis i'm like what's going <laughs> on <laughs> and i'm like I, I've, I've always wanted them i've always thought they were super cool um you know and now i have the time to do it i mean i normally i wouldn't have 44 hours to sit in the chair <laughs> That's a Which long I time. I don't even dude. know you're doing that. Yeah, that's a long time. It's usually in eight hour in eight hour sessions, you know. So it's a lot. So how but, much is there to go? Uh, I got. I. I mean, it's getting. It's getting close to. I got to do this whole thing here. So, and then and then we'll see what's next. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll see. I was trying next. to all my life. I was like, do I want a dolphin? Like I was like, what would I? <laughs> That's amazing. It's like, I'll put a dolphin on the back of my shoulder. What am I doing? Like, what, yeah. I mean, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so uh, you go, I know the story uh, to get to Beyond Salem. You had, yeah. met, you had met with Albert. Yes. Right, Alar, and I talked about, and you knew at that point, w at what point did you know, like, how the character was going to behave? I did okay. not know. I That's truly strange. didn't know. Listen, Michael. Here's the thing, and everyone knows about knows this about me. I didn't I, listen. I, I'm very trusting, and I'm like, you know, Albert's a really good guy, right? You know, and and I already knew Albert from years ago, but I've heard about his reputation, how he treats people. He's an awesome dude, you know, and so he's like, you know, and it was very not, it was very ambiguous. 
we're like, we don't, we're not sure what the story is, but you know, we don't have one. A, we want <laughs> you don't have one, but would you be a bad guy? Would you like to do stunts and stuff like that? I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool. And he goes, okay, cool. I I said, Albert, whatever you need, dude, I'll I'll do it for you. Like, it's fine. It was if that literally that's it. Like, you need me, I'll be there. Right. So, and uh, he's like, okay, awesome. And then, you know, a couple months later, I get the offer and then I get the scripts, you know, and, um, and it was great. I mean, Ron did a great job. I got to do a lot of cool stuff, you know? Um, it was great. I watched the whole thing. And what I loved in, in what they did at the very end in the, in, when you were with her in the room. room. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's the scene. I was like, when are they giving him the scene? Sure. We're waiting for the scene of like, what? And they kind of left it cliffhanged. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it's, you know, there could be more potentially, you know, they, right. 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 Yes. Yes. So you get to have that emotional scene and we're like, which is like the Steve Burton scenes we've seen, like those great. Sure. Sure. And what did you think of that? Did you, because we still really don't know what his issue is, right? <laughs> or yeah. You know? Listen, I think I, I love that they did that because, you know, if there is another one, um, if there is an open door on days at some point, and I don't know this, I'm just saying, right. um, I think they wanted to make it where, Hey, this guy is really not a bad guy. He's redeemable. You know? redeemable. He's redeemable, redeemable, you know? And, but it's funny because there's two things that you've just brought up. So I watched the whole thing. Right. Yep. And I, and I thought it was great. They did a great job. Production value was great. Yep. I thought it looked great. And, um, and, <laughs> those scenes, those interrogation scenes were so technical because if you go back and look, there were so many shots that were technical and it was an emotional scene, you know? And so I was interested in seeing, because I hadn't acted for a while. Um, so I, I was interested in seeing how, how, how those scenes came out because I felt like, hey, there's a lot of emotion in those scenes and hopefully they're good, you know? Um, and so I watched and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. I probably could have been I'm like, I don't, I don't want to say bigger or more, but that was just me criticizing myself. Um, but Christian Alfonso is great. And I, I, I didn't really talk about it. I talked a little bit about it. No, I actually haven't talked about it like in a public forum. You know, we got thrown in right away where we did the scene in the park first. Oh, the, the marriage thing in the show? Yes, that was first. Oh, my God. That was the first day. And I never even. Hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, what's going on? You know, so, so I, it was so, it was like, I felt comfortable going in the building. I knew a lot of people on the crew, the cast. Right. So, but you know, it's like, you have these scenes with this person. You don't know who, I don't really know her. I met her once maybe before, but, but the greatest thing about her was she has amazing eyes as an actress like just eyes that I could really connect with. And it was a highly emotional day. And, and I said, and I was talking to somebody, I said, it was kind of like, she was, she helped me like stay anchored just by looking in her eyes that day, because it was emotional stuff. And I can't get to the emotional places and all that. Um, but it was just, if I just could just look at her, she's probably like, why is this weirdo staring at me all the time? You know? <laughs> and, and, um, and she was great and very gracious and awesome. But she really did help me out, you know, and I told her that, but I'm sure, you know, everybody says nice things to her. But I told her, I said, hey, you really, this really, you made my job so much easier today. Thank you. Just by, just by letting me stare in your eyes, it helped me. Like, it helped me, especially in our scenes, obviously, too. So, um, but yeah, we shot that first and I'm like, can't we ever go in order? Ever? Ever? <laughs> can I just get warmed up? They're like, Hey, you want to be on the show? Here you go. You know, it's like, it's like when I went back to GH as patient six, I'm like, at least I don't have to say anything for three days. It's like, great. <laughs> I can get comfortable again. And then I have a few lines, you know, but this was like, Nope, you're going right in buddy. So, uh, but it was fun, man. And it was great that we got so many. And cause I did this whole circuit with the uh, Deidre, right. I was, and, yes, I was wondering, I was going to ask you about that too. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and she, and she's awesome. And, and it was interesting because she kept mentioning about how much extra time they had uh, on Beyond Salem, right? Because we all know the time constraints of daytime and all this stuff, right? We're trying to do so much, 100 plus pages a day, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, but with Beyond Salem, they did. I was like, this feels like 1994. Like, we're getting four takes. This is crazy. Like, Albert was so excited. You know, he'd come out and he goes, hey, listen, we got this one. Perfect. Great. Now just do what you want. Oh, that's amazing. I can't yeah, like, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. He was like, try something new. Just try this, Steve. Try, just try this. You know, or so-and-so, try this. And we're like, yeah, this is amazing. This is what acting is. Like we get to explore and discover, you know, and, and that's why uh, she kept saying we had more takes. And it was funny because I was doing the scene where the pizza blows up at the Nichols house, right? Or place in Seattle, whatever. And, uh, and Stephen, Stephen and, and yeah, the Johnsons. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Nichols. Sorry. Stephen Nichols. Yeah. Stephen, yeah, Patch and Kayla, whatever. They're sitting on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just call them Patch and Kayla. Okay. So they're sitting on the couch and, and we're doing this and they're like, I mean, how many takes are we going to get? <laughs> you know, like it was so foreign that getting any, you know, getting any, you know, because sometimes you got to rehearse, you got to tape rehearsal and all that stuff. So it was, uh, it was, it was cool. It was a fun experience, man. I had, a, it was a great time there for me. The funniest thing though, was the, the wedding. So she's going to, Hope's going to marry Harris. She comes out and the prism is in her, stuck in here. And I was like, what? Yeah. That was my favorite. I mean, that was. I know, that was my first day. That was my first day. First day like, I'm like, I'm like uh, do I get that? Or how do I grab this? <laughs> like, please forgive me. I have to go in that's for this the, right now. <laughs> that's all I can think about. Was like, this prism thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> so funny. Um, and then how, did you get to meet Peter at all? Peter Ruckley? I did, yeah. Are we yeah, even talk, 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 were, no, you? I talked to him briefly. I saw him in makeup. I went in and said hi and talked to him briefly. Uh, and you know, Steven and Drake were great. Drake was awesome. You know, I, I, the first, my first day on the set, Drake came up and just gave me a big hug and ran on the set and whatever. And they're like, Drake, Drake, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, come on, this is freaking John Black. Let's go. You know, it's like, it's, well, uh, I, what I was going to say is in the satellite tour you did with Deidre, what I, what I know, and I, and I get it. And I, you're, you're a pro at this, you know, you let her talk because, you know, she's talking about the show and you're new to that you're new to that universe of Salem, of those people. And you were like, you were hold, you know, you were stepping back a bit, which was, you know, she's the star of days of our lives. And, you know, you're the newbie in essence over there, right? Even though you're- 100%. Right? Yeah. So was that awkward having to do that kind of conversing? Or? No, no, I mean, no, I, because I, I've always, I've always respect, had great respect for the people before us. Right. Like I've always said this about, you know, whoever it is, Eric Braden, Stuart Damon, David Lewis. I mean, you know, Tony Geary, like you can name, you can name them all. I can't, but you can name them all. Sure. And it truly is. I've always had this thing. Like if it wasn't for these guys, I wouldn't be here. Like literally they laid the groundwork for us. I know it's a TV show and I know the show would go on, but these guys put in time. You know, and a lot of these guys would teach me what to do, the right thing to do also. It's like Stuart Damon did, you know? So with Deidre, she's been on for 40 plus years. You got Jeannie Francis. You got all these ladies who are legends. Like, like they're the queens of daytime. So I'm going to let the queen talk. Right. Exactly. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm just going to let the queen. If the queen wants to call on me, I'll talk. Like, I mean, right. that's what I do. I'm not, and especially I go to another show. I'm just going to fall in place. Well, I'm going to be back at the back of the line. It's a new show for me, just like I did YNR. Even though I came from General Hospital after all these years, I'm going to go earn. I'm going to go earn it. I'm going to earn my keep on the show. I'm not going and going, hey, I was Jason for 25 years, guys. I was a big deal over there, just in case you didn't know. Right. right? So <laughs> right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to earn. I'm going to earn my keep there, you know. So but she was great. And then you had Miranda Wilson to work off of as Megan. Yes, yes. Which was interesting because we hadn't seen her for years on daytime. And Apparently, yes. Right. That's what I've been hearing. Right. <laughs> that's what I've been hearing, yeah. Was there any scene <clears throat> that was the hardest? Of it? Was it the that, those scenes you talked about the first day? Or was there something else that was harder to do for you? In well, the thing is, it's funny because I don't, I don't necessarily like hats. <laughs> you... Okay. Okay. I'm not a fan of hats. Okay. Hey. 
I have, well, the beret, the other hat, the, the pizza. pizza hat. There's hats. There's a lot of hats. Okay? And there I have so PTSD. many hats. I'm like, I, where's the space? I, 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 and I have PTSD. And they're like, you look great. You look great. I go, I have PTSD from when I was in, out of this world, right? Because I could not act at all on that sitcom. Like, thank, thank you, Bob and Barbara Booker, for hiring me and thank believing you. in me. Because yeah. you guys gave me a shot. So thank you. And it's like, but it was always the, the joke was, oh, let's put him in a funny hat. Like, right. So it'd be like, I worked at a place called chicken in the basket and they put a freaking chicken in a basket on my head, you know? And I'm like, oh this is God. what, this is it. So every time I put get some weird hat on, I'm like, oh, I hate hats. And plus my hair, man, I don't want to mess the hair up. But <laughs> that is so hurt, interesting. Man. The PTSD and the hats. Yes. I don't like no hats, bro. No hats. So. Oh my gosh. So, but that with the hardest, I, I don't know. The look, man, I've been doing it a long time. So you just get thrown in and you just kind of kick into gear, you know, and you just but feel it hot. Going, were you good or were you like out of felt out of practice in the rhythm? No, I felt good. I felt good. Mm -hmm. I felt good. I was I was focused. I was ready. And once you get back on set, then you feel it doesn't matter what the set is. You're just like, I'm on a set on a daytime show. There's the four cameras, there's the boom, and I'm at home now was there yeah. do you think days operate with the other shows you've been in wine or dh <clears throat> did this feel different in terms of the days family or the people you worked with was it any different than any of the other shows or oh i mean it's you know it's, it's different people i mean there's some people actually on the crew who were from wine when i was there and then some people from gh who were on the crew also so you now everyone pretty much op look we're all it's all one big family in to some degree. So it's like everything pretty much operates the same. Um, you know, Albert was just always very gracious and, and, and awesome on the set. So, you know, it was just, it was really cool. And every time I watch Maurice Bernard show, he still says, I taught Steve Burton and this one and this one and this one how to act. <laughs> he did. He did. But is that, that is the truth. You still, that is the truth. Is that oh, 100%. Truth? Yeah. Did he teach me how to act? I don't know if he taught he me how to act. Your act. Oh, well, that's a whole, that's a, that's a for sure 1000%. Yes. You know, like he took, he, he, he invested time in me. Like he invested a lot of time in, into, you know, the story goes that I was at the craft service table and he and I didn't talk much when he came on the show. And, you know, we were at the craft service table table together and he goes hey what do you what are you thinking about doing i go i don't know it's four years in i think i'm gonna leave and it really i was that it was i was really close to leaving the show and maurice was like i don't know man he goes i saw some of your stuff and he was talking about like the stuff with uh monica's cancer story you know he goes you got great emotion and you're believable and and, and i believe you when you talk you know and he goes what's your technique and i go technique i don't even know what the freak i'm doing dude like you know i took one sense memory uh acting class which was great uh adam hill he's a great acting teacher and he uh we, he, he really got me in touch with my emotions during this six-week class you know he said and maurice is like let me just teach you you want to work together you know and i said uh, okay and and he says just let me teach you what i what i what works for me i said uh, okay done but I was still Jason Quarterman at the time. So the funny thing is, is I immediately turned into a method actor because that's what Maurice is, right? And then he would, we'd be doing, we'd be running my scenes. He'd be doing, we'd be doing like, I, I'd do the scene and he'd be throwing a tennis ball at me at the same time. And we'd have to get the, the lines out perfectly and do it 10 times and all this stuff and crazy stuff, right? And I remember one scene in particular was, um, we were at a restaurant, it was with Jason, it was with Keisha. And we were on a date and, and, uh, um, I forgot, it was a Francine, the producer at the time, Frange Francesca chain. Yeah. 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 And, 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 uh, she came out and she goes, what the hell is wrong with you? And I go, what? She goes, you're on a date, not a funeral. You know, cause I was playing everything. So Maurice was like, just play the pain, play the pain. Right. So, um, but anyway, yes, to, to answer your question, he taught me a lot. He invested a lot of time with me. I spent a lot of time with him and his family in the first couple of years. Um, and it was just, you know, very generous of him.
But but he does like to take credit a lot, so I'm not sure. He did get a little mad when I got better than him also, so he just got a little upset. He was disgruntled. Upset he was disgruntled about that. Yeah. acting coach. Weren't you both nominated together one year? I think, I don't, I don't even know. I feel like you were both know. against each other one year. I, how Does he have two Emmys? Three. He has three. Oh, no. So you have to win another. <laughs> Oh, come on, man. I thought I was done. <laughs> no, he, he got three. He got his three, yeah. God, that's good the Elsewhere story was a big, you know, he was... Oh, amazing. that was a slam dunk, I mean, dude. It was you amazing. Were that, you were in I that. Know. Oh, God. Oh. No. <laughs> that was one of the greatest stories. They, that it was um, uh, heartbreaking. Like, uh, it, it, there was just no doubt that they were both going to win. Like, there's just no doubt. No doubt. No. Amazing. What is your... Do you have a favorite from your time? On GH or Y and R, do you have like like I really love this story, I love this moment. Anything that comes? Well, I mean, dude, I've had so many of those moments yeah, on, I know. on General Hospital. Like, I it's hard to go back and go, this this. We had such rich storytelling. We had such good scenes. We had such good actors, scene partners. You know, it was like it was just so good. Like there, I can't, there was like a stretch where it was just so good for years. Like we were just super spoiled, you know, but I guess the thing about going to Y&R was I, I had a fresh start. Right. It was clean. A new character. And, right. and they, they really, and, and Josh really, they really mapped out my character. They really like put some work into it and. And then that was fun. And to win an Emmy 20 years, 20 plus years later was such, was surreal. And it was just like, it was amazing, man. I mean, and it was just, it was a great character. And it, again, I got to work with a lot of great people over there, but um, the stories were awesome. Right. And we'll see, maybe it might end up back there. Who knows? We don't. There's, hey, listen, there's four shows. So I, I, what so are my odds? Done, you, you're working around 25 percent. Do I have zero percent chance? Well, you have twenty. You have bold and beautiful. You haven't been on. Correct. I'm not a numbers guy, so I don't know what my chances are. So whatever. If it happens, it happens. Um, I'm always open for things, man. I never. I've learned uh, uh, in my life never to say never because you just never know. And in the fact that you know, you and I've shared over the years all our, you know, we've both gone ups and downs and I've talked to you about what's gone on in my life. Sure. You've always been there for me. And, and when you've gone through this difficult period and you said, do you feel you've had people in your life you could talk to or? 100%. You feel like you've been able to. Oh yeah. Feel like I'm going through this hard time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's when you find out, that's when you find out really quickly who, right. who your f real friends are. Right. So, and, and guess what? You find out that you only need like two. <laughs> you only, it's true. Right. You don't need when 50. You, down, you just need those couple people. Yeah. That are that there. Those are, your, those are your ride or die people. Yeah. Like till the end. Like, yeah. Doesn't matter what time of day, what the situation is. Like, they're there no matter what, you know. And those are special people, you know. And I hope everybody has those one or two people in their lives because, you know, you need them. We need people, man. We're people. Like we're human beings, we need relationships like that, you know. So now, Bradford and you have this unique relationship. You're on the road together. You do yeah. your all your podcasts and your videos and everything. <clears throat> How did that end up working itself out? Because I know you always wanted to do something like this because we did, right? At one mm -hmm. point, yes, yeah, we and, did actually, and, yes. and it kind of worked. The chemistry worked, and the whole thing kind of worked. Did you see in Bradford like a way to? be the yin to your yang like it would work was it yeah, yeah i think i think um i think we really kind of found our our rhythm on, on gh obviously in our scenes right and we we spent a lot of time together we spent a lot of you know we did a lot of stories together during that stretch um so and and here's the great thing about Bradford and I. We don't see things eye to eye a lot of times. Right, right. Different political views, different stands, different all this stuff. But this is what's great is we love each other no matter what. We trust each other and we respect each other. 
And like, we use us as like, why can't everybody just do this? <laughs> you know, like that's, and we've been doing this for a long time, you know, and we've been working together and we do podcasts. We spend a ton of time together. We're on the road together, driving in a car, you know, city to city, eight cities in eight days. And we're in the car freaking 60 hours. And, you know, so it's like, we spent a ton of time together, but to answer your question, I think we really found it when we were on GH. And then when I came back, I just wanted to hit the road and do something different. You know, I wanted to put on a show and I said, there's no better partner for me than Bradford because he's a showman. He's an awesome singer. And, and he and I brainstorm and collaborate together. Amazingly. You know, it's, it's like, you know, things just happen. We talk about things, talk about, Oh, that, that works. Oh, that didn't work. And he can be honest with me. I can be honest with him, you know, and really he's, he's, an, he, he executes, right? Like, in any business partnership, you're going to have your strengths and you're going to have your weaknesses, right? So Bradford was, I said, he goes, hey, listen, we should do a podcast. We we're talking about a podcast. And I'm like, hey, we should do a podcast, whatever. He goes, he goes, okay, uh, you want to do one? I said, yeah, let's do it. So I said, just figure it out. Like, because I ain't going to figure that out. I know. <laughs> okay, I'm just telling you now. Like, Steve shows up, does the stuff. We others figure it out, and then Steve comes in and he's like, I know what I'm doing. Da -da -da. Where do I go? Let's go. Listen, I can execute. Sometimes I have great vision. I can do these things, right? But I need, I sometimes I just need a nuts and bolts guy. Like, and, and Bradford was like, Yeah, I'll do, I'll do the podcast. And he literally showed up the next day in my dressing room with a bin. Oh, to do it? He literally to do it. The next day, figured it out. He's like, I got it all. Let's do the podcast. I'm like, What? <laughs> And, and he's like, yeah, you said, figure it out. I said, oh, okay, great. So we started the podcast and he uploaded it on the internet and, and that was it. And then we did it every week, you know? So, and then we started, you know, during COVID, we were doing our, our uh, bad jokes and seven questions and our YouTube channel and all that stuff. And that was awesome. Cause I know, I know we get so many uh, people who appreciated that content during that time because everybody was locked in, you know, I said you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't right. go anywhere, but um yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's been great to have a guy like Bradford and a friend and to continue to create and work together. And, you know, now that I'm not on the show, we're still doing our comedy music comedy show, you know, um, and we're going to be doing a holiday show uh, coming up and, you know, next year, I don't know what next year looks like, but we're still going to do it. Do you get an adrenaline rush from going live on stage? You like oh, it's on stage. the greatest I, thing you, in the world. You at the GH convention and you go to your thing, like or oh. to get you're on stage and you like do something in front of the audience, like very spontaneous, right? You do your thing and I'm moderating and you get up and do and it's sorry, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm, it's, it's, I'm look, kidding. So to, uh, yeah, I'm, it, kidding. It, I'm kidding. No, no, no but, but so so but here's just the like, progression. Like, Right. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. The progression is in the beginning when we used to do these appearances, right? And, you know, your audience might like to hear this. Like we would do Kmart's, malls, Targets, and they'd put us in some random department. That's right. In and the go, hey, in the, in the back court. Sometimes it was the tool section at, at Sears for me. Yep. Sometimes the lingerie section or the home furnishing yep. section. Yep. And I'm just sitting there. They're like, okay, there's your table. And I'm like, that you just... I just go sit at the table and, I, and they're like, yeah. And I get people coming up going, Hey, is this where we get a credit card? Like, like, is this a credit card application? I go, no. And it's just, it was so like frustrating that they, that the organization, there were some that handled it great, but most of the time it was not handled correctly. Like it could have made, they could have made, made it an event. Right. And they weren't. They were just going, hey, hopefully some they'll just run an ad and some guy, someone will come see this guy in the Sears okay. department. Right. Whatever, right? So then I started working with Linda Rowe at Coastal, and I'm like, I just want to do it my way. I want to try it my way, you know? And she goes, well, I handle comedy clubs. I can get you in a comedy club, but you have to figure out how to sell tickets. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, then it was up to me. Like it, the success or failure was on me. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'll take that, like, because I know how I want something to run and I want it to be beneficial for the fans. That's number one, because that's the customer, like that's customer service. That's why I've always done these. I always want to go out, shake hands and go, hey, thanks for watching the show. 
And, and we started doing these appearances at comedy clubs. This is how it all started at comedy clubs is I started, we just, I get up and do a little fun stories and then we do a Q and a, and that was it. And that was, that was all. And then I was just like, ah, this isn't enough. Like, I want to put on a show and then Port Chuck happened. Right. You know, and then that, that kind of took off. And then that became less interaction personally with the crowd, like a Q and a, you know, and then with Bradford, this whole thing morphed into a, a kind of music comedy show. Um, so to answer your question, anytime now, I love being in front of live audience. I mean, I'm not fearful. Like I don't have any fear of it. So when we start doing Q and A's, I just get up and I just go like now there's no Q and A for me. It's just, I'm just, oh, no, I'm just going, you know? So, um, but yeah, I love, I love the lot. We love the live, the energy. Like, you know, we were in New Jersey. We played two new clubs this trip and New Jersey was 300 plus people. And it was just electric. Like it, it was incredible. The crowds are incredible, man. The energy is so awesome to just soak in. It's just so fun. I'm starting a fitness app here, fitness nutrition mindset app that's coming out. If you're a man or a woman and you want to get in shape, there's a waiting list at steveburtonm3.com. It's going to be, it's going to be special. So. And it's amazing because I'm watching like, you know, of course I watch your feed, your Instagram feed, whatever feed. And it's like, you know, you're really getting back into like, oh, you're dude. back into tip top shape. Yeah, there's no, you're, I mean, this is my. Going there. You're like going there. <laughs> like, wow, that, like, that means a all lot. Right, he's that, putting that, me to shame. I got to go. <laughs> that means a lot because I know, you know, we've, we've had our conversations because, um, you know, you were a, a huge gym rat at some point. Um but, you know, what kind of makes this different, Michael, is is really the mindset part of this, right? Because anybody can have a fitness nutrition app and, you know, there's a ton, there's a million of them. So what I, what my primary focus is obviously fitness and nutrition, but it's also mind. I believe that we have to work mind, body, spirit together, and we have to have a mindset shift if we want to stick to anything, right? Because most people can diet and then they don't diet. They go to the gym and then they don't go to the gym. So we get the mindset right and everything else will fall into place. That's why I'm so excited about it because it, it's something I've been doing for two years now. Every single day, my routine doesn't change and it's just paid dividends in my life. And I just, I love it. And I want to teach others because I know how much it can change your life. Right. You can see it like metamorphosize people's lives. Because 100%. It's how we perceive ourselves on the outside, but we're also working on the inside of exactly. why, you know. Exactly why right. You're, right. That's yeah, absolutely you know, right. We're all human beings, right? Like we all suffer. We all have pain. We all go through things. We all don't see ourselves maybe as other people do, you know, and it's like we're the same. And what really separates a lot of people is just your habits, Right. And I just want to, I want to help people make good habits. And I want, and I, and what I've been able to do through my habits and my discipline and all these things is just continue to build self-esteem, have more self-confidence, you know, keep my word to myself. And, and these things are important, you know, cause that's the internal work you're talking about. Right. It's like, if we can work internally on you and make you feel better about yourself, you keep your word to yourself, you follow through for you then the game changes. It changes, right. Changes, it's done. Right. So right. anyway, that's my one minute spiel. There you were. <laughs> so so if, if somebody signs up. Yeah, up, yeah. So if I'm a man or woman or whoever wants to sign up. Sure, sure. What, what is, what? Oh, happens? okay. Well, I mean, first I'm doing, I'm, first I'm launching it for men. I'm doing an eight week program for men and men will be able to pick, uh, you know, just kind of body weight, uh, eight week body weight program they can do anywhere. They can pick a beginner gym workout or an intermediate gym workout, right? And then I'm going to do their macros for them. Oh, and then they okay. can they can. So that's the most important thing is your macronutrients, figuring out what to eat, what's right for you, what calorie intake is right for you, and then you know you'll be able to upload all your meals on the app, and we'll get, your workouts will be on the app, and then we do an hour Zoom or two hour Zoom, whatever it is, because I like to talk about mindset, about changing your mindset in life, and how do we build a new morning routine to get you off on the right foot daily to be in a positive mindset to be in a positive mind frame uh throughout the day and just start building like stacking little wins like you know i get up at 4 45 i go to the gym 5 30 i come yeah. home yeah and i come home i eat good 
I get my work done. Like I'm like I'm stacking these little wins that make me feel good all day long, right? And I'm in I'm in a really high rate of vibration. I have a positive outlook in life, and I can see positivity because I am a positive person. If you're negative all the time, if you're not working out, if you're not eating right. If you're beating yourself up, if you haven't forgiven yourself for things, if you're living in the past, which a lot of people do, it's hard to see things in a positive light. You're seeing through your lens of negativity. So we just want to get rid of that stuff so you can start being you, become the best version of you possible. And we're going to build it from, from the foundation of just brick by brick daily, having these little wins, having these little successes, keeping your word to yourself and changing your outlook on who you are. Because it really comes down, Michael, to the story that people keep telling themselves. Correct, it's right. Like we replay, we replay the tape. It's almost like- We replay, replay the tape, right? right? We tell our sa- the same story. Like when I'm coaching people now, I literally, I can be objective and go, oh, I can see all the positives of those people. And all they do is see the negative. So I'm like, we have to rewrite this story here because you're not that person. Yeah, maybe you had some mistakes in life. Maybe you had some traumatic things happen. Maybe, yeah, we all have, you know? So the hard, a lot of times the hardest thing I find is that, that, that people can't forgive themselves. A hundred percent. They can't. So I, and and of course they can't forgive themselves for decisions they made or patterns they got in. Correct. Horrible things that happened to them that they think were their fault. Their fault, right. Yeah. And you get into this for some, an eating cycle or they don't work out or, you know, they don't feel good about themselves to even do anything to make themselves feel better. It's like, it's as right. Like, you know, I've been in that. I've been, yeah, in I dude, everybody does. Like yeah. there's always regret. Like there's always things that you, you regret. And it's like, you know, if we can, if, if I could take somebody, cause look, I feel like everybody needs coaches. I had a coach, you know, I feel like, you know, if, if, if I could show people what's worked for me, and I've been through a lot in the last year and I'll say, and I'll say that's, that's enough. That's but I've, been through, I, I, I've been through a lot and, and it's, this has really enabled me to handle this in such a, an amazing way that it's like, I, I want to be able to teach people. I want people to have better lives. Like we have one life. We're here. This, this is it. This is our chance. Like, I don't want people to waste their life beating themselves up, not feeling good, not looking how they want to look not having great relationships. Like I don't want people to feel that way. I hate it. I honestly, I hate it when I see people like that and they're just go, you can change it. You can change it. You can do something right now. Like tomorrow we can start like, this is it. Like, you know, I have, I've unlocked the key for me, you know, and a lot of it is gratitude, being grateful, you know, working from that type of mind frame, as opposed to, you know, being fearful and having a scarcity mindset or, or, um, you know, regret and shame and all these things, you know, so it, it's a deep dive, but in eight weeks, we can accomplish a lot, you know, so, and the women I'm really excited to work with because women usually put themselves last, right? Especially if you're a mom, you're a wife, you put yourselves, you put everybody else before you. And I'm here to try to stop this now. Like, I'm here to say, listen, you have to put yourself first right now so you can continue to be here for your people, right? Because uh, all of a sudden you blink, 25 years goes by and you're like, oh man, I haven't done anything for myself. I don't feel good. I don't look good. I got some issues. I can't walk, whatever it is, right? So it's like the mind's not good. It's all connected. You've got to work mind, body, spirit. And that's exactly what I want to do is because with women, if I can change the mindset, and they're positive and they see life a little differently and they feel good about themselves. They're going to be able to be there for their people 150% more than they are now. Well, you know, you see so many people, so many fitness gurus, so many people, you know, saying, go with me and I'll show you how, like, there's a lot of people out there like that. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think, you know, when you see those, those individuals doing that, do you think, oh good, they're doing that? Or do you think a lot of it's hot air? Yeah, I, I look, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to, to pass judgment on that stuff if I haven't done it, right? Right. All I know is what's worked for me. Right. Okay. Mindset wise, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever spiritually might mean for you, that's great because we all need to be in a meditative place. We all need to have that time, you know, that reflection, you know, and it's like, so I, I don't know if it is. I just know that 
you know, mass diet programs don't work because we're not fixing the internal. Like we're using external for band-aids, you know, and it just doesn't work. We know it doesn't work, but yeah. it's a fallback and it's easy. You know, sometimes the hard way is the way for people. Like you got to put the work in, you know, that's why I say, let's get to work. Like we got to get to work here. Yeah. Like, but you're, but like, it's funny because people will spend their whole life, you know, starting a business and investing in their business and killing themselves working 80 hours a week. But then we don't put anything into ourselves. Like, it's okay to invest in you. Like, it's okay. It's like, okay. some people it's need okay. permission. Like, yeah. hey, it's okay. Yeah. We need you to be the best version of you. Yeah. You know, so anyway. Well, I thank you so much for taking the time today, Steve. It was great to talk to you. We have awesome. It's always a pleasure, time. Michael. Always and, uh, a pleasure. You can catch Steve as Harris Michaels streaming on Peacock. That's on right. Our Lives Beyond Salem, Chapter Two. You can go watch it again and again and again. If you hadn't seen it, you got to go see it because yeah, it's it really, really a fun ride. And it is a fun ride. And then Bo and Hope fans, get ready. Bring your bring your hankies. <laughs> and for Steve's scene, you need a hanky too. At there the, you go. Perfect. Yeah. Too. So yeah, um, I wish you all the best. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. It means and, a lot to me. Uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right, Michael Fairman. Right. Love you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.